This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, May the 21st, 2019. It's the feast day of the Saints of the Cristero War in Mexico in the 1920s. Blessed Miguel Pro and St. Christopher Magallanes are probably the best known of the many saints and blesseds that have come from that horrible moment. The Cristero War, a.k.a. La Cristada, followed the somewhat sudden but definitely violent imposed atheism of the 1917 Mexican Constitution. Presidente Calles enforced the atheism by means of horrific violence against priests and by banning all religious festivals, celebrations, and displays, including most masses. While some priests took up arms, the vast majority of the violent blowback came from the laity, whose faith was passionate and sustaining. Remember, Our Lady of Guadalupe had appeared here. Each of the Cristero saints has a story that's worth looking into. Their story is much like the stories of men and women like Thomas More and Maximilian Kolbe and Edith Stein. They lived in, quote, civilized cultures. They grew up with the free exercise of religion, and then more suddenly than they could have ever believed. They were forced to choose between the state and the Lord, and they chose well. It's a somber and a sobering reminder of how quickly so-called civilization can descend into madness. Los Santos de la Cristada pray for us. In the opposite vein today, in Poland in 1674, the nobility cast their votes for Jan Sobieski, making him King of Poland and Grand Duke of Lithuania. He sat on the throne for 22 glorious years. He was a master of the battlefield, but he wasn't a warmonger. He brought great stability to that region of Slavic culture. He famously defeated the Ottoman Turks at Vienna in 1683, and that earned for him the title of the Lion of Lechistan. The Pope named him Savior of Christendom. Well, Today in 1881 in Washington, D.C., the 60-year-old nurse Clara Barton founded the American Red Cross. She had built up a following giving talks about her experiences just as the war between the states came to an end. She met and worked with Susan B. Anthony and with Frederick Douglass. In 1869, she traveled to Geneva and encountered Dr. Appia and the Swiss Red Cross. The two worked in tandem to establish a Red Cross here in the States. The biggest challenge was actually the very widespread belief that the Civil War was going to be the last war on American soil ever. Even U.S. President Rutherford B. Hayes told her that the Red Cross probably wouldn't be necessary for that reason. Barton had more success with President Chester Arthur by explaining that the Red Cross would be able to help beyond just war zones. She specifically mentioned earthquakes, forest fires, and hurricanes. He was sold on the idea and gave his enthusiastic approval. It was today in 1881 that Barton held the first meeting of the American Red Cross at her apartment on I Street in D.C. In 2017, The Red Cross processed over $2.7 trillion in relief donations for disaster assistance. Finally, today in 1860, it was the birthday of William Eindhoven. He was a Dutchman born in the Dutch East Indies. He became a doctor and found himself interested in the electrical systems of the human body. He began to experiment with ways to measure the electrical currents in the human body, and in doing so, he invented in 1895 the first practical electrocardiogram, which is abbreviated EKG or ECG. It's a tool for measuring the electrical activity in the human heart over time. Now, I say this was the first practical EKG because there were certainly folks working on this kind of device elsewhere. Murhead made a primitive one in 1872, Burden Sanderson made one for frogs, and Waller, no joke, made one using a toy train. Eindhoven was given the 1924 Nobel for his efforts. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.